Hello everybody, welcome back to the studio. My name is Emmy Klein and I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Arama. And this is open studio hour. So uh, essentially what happens during this hour uh, is that I am doing my normal everyday job here at, at work. Um, I am currently going to be testing more of things going on to this Artfinity uh, synthesis paper. I can't believe I actually said it without having to say it several times. It's, it's one of those words for some reason I just have a hard time saying Artfinity synthesis. But anywho, um, that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm going to be testing a lot of different things. And unfortunately, I don't have my, um, my tablet here to see the questions and comments. Um, I think they might be actually setting up another one for me because I left it at home. But uh, if you do have any questions of what I'm doing or if you have any questions that is unrelated to what I'm doing, feel free to pop them in the chat. I do have Amanda over there. Awesome Amanda. Uh, she's got my back. Just making sure that uh, I can um, hear what you guys are, are asking. So feel free. And I'm going to just get started because I need to see what all this paper can do. Uh, and I actually do have some, this is the Charvin Extra Fine uh, oil paints that I had just popped on this canvas or uh, this palette earlier for something completely unrelated. And I happen to have the paint on the palette, so I figured I might as well use it. Make sure this is nice and clean. All right, and I'm gonna actually take a sheet of this paper out just to make sure I don't mess any of the other ones up. Because again, I don't know what this is gonna do. So. Whew. All right. Not bad. Let's try it with a little bit of solvent. That was a lot of solvent. Gonna, ooh, yay! We got the. Thank you. Got a tablet. A tablet set up. I am never gonna be able to s pronounce your name. Kindindid. I'm sorry. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> All right. Let me actually switch it from. That to the live chat so now I can see what you guys are saying yay but Amanda in case I do actually miss your questions Amanda's still gonna make sure that I uh, get to everyone who is asking something so yay all right so in case anybody is wondering out there um, this right here is the extra fine uh, blue shadow Charvin oil paints and then I have a flake white as well that I just, I happen to have on the palette over here. Um, so I'm just testing to see what it's gonna do on this paper. It looks like it's going down pretty well, but this is but one of the many tests that I'm gonna have to do. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is letting this fully dry and then seeing how well I can layer on top. But this is oil paints. I'm also going to do a nice thick area over here. It's very slick paper, gotta say. So that way, I'm gonna let that dry and I'll also let that like chunk of oil paint dry over there just to see if it comes right off. But this is gonna take definitely days to dry. <laughs> so, I don't know. You're on your big TV. Oh, that's awesome. But that means I am, I'm sure, quite large. <laughs> Suzanne, you made it. And Paolo. Water soluble media. I don't know what you mean by that. Or maybe not. Still can't wrap my head around water soluble oils. So the, the cool thing with um, water soluble oils is because uh, it's 
it reacts well with oil. That's what that's what it is. So the emulsion that they add to it has uh, one part of it accepts oils and the other part of it accepts water, which I love science for that exact reason. We can have amazing things uh, because of it. Uh, and then it just, it, it can be like dissolved with water, which is the coolest thing. All right, so there's the oil paints though. This is not a uh, water soluble oil, just so you know, this is a traditional oil I'm not using water soluble oils, but that's what you were talking about. But water soluble oils are fantastic. Yes, Suzanne, when the winter time hits and it gets really cold, water soluble oils are great because you can still paint and it's the toxicity of your solvents is no longer an issue because you can use water. <laughs> now that's the, the other thing I, I was asking uh, one of our vendors, is it water soluble or is it water mixable or is it water missable because i've heard it all different ways it all means the same thing so uh yes it is water soluble and it is water mixable deja hello deja and angela eight eight inches tall in the corner of my screen i'm i'm large it's about a uh, life size right <laughs> Little. The blue that I'm using, it's the blue shadow. It's one of those colors that is only found in the Charvin line uh, and only the oil. You cannot get it in acrylics either. Um, they don't, uh, sadly. I want them to make it in acrylics and I have yet to convince them, but uh, this blue shadow color, they also have a green shadow and a pink version as well. So it actually is a very, very dark pigment just in the mass tone. And then when you uh, mix it with a solvent or break it apart a little bit, you get these amazing kind of desaturated kind of colors. I love that so, so much. Oh, I thought it was uh, today was about water soluble media. No, um, today is just open studio, so I'm kind of just text or testing the uh, the paper. This is that Artfinity synthesis paper that I had on. I had this on the show for the uh, the Jerry's Live. Was it last Tuesday? Tuesday? My days are kind of blurring together because we're doing a lot of things around here. Yes, it was Tuesday. And there were so many questions about this paper that I ended up just, I figured I'd grab it today and see what I can do. Uh, and I also had, no, it wasn't Tuesday. Tuesday was, this past Tuesday was the uh, Mystery Art Box. Last Tuesday. It was the Tuesday before. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, we're so busy around here, it's just kind of all blurring together. But this was on the last Tuesday's show, or the, the one that happened two days ago. Ooh, it's been a week. Um, and this was the, the water soluble gel crayons, which are really fun. And I wanted to see how they do on here, which is actually quite nice. But the cool thing is, is that they're, it's like a lipstick. So it's, it's really like a jelly kind of a consistency, but they are water soluble, which is really fun. The paper, yes, the paper is the Artfinity Synthesis Paper. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm so happy you get the art supplies quickly. That's It is really important whenever you're trying to work on something to get it quick. I'm very happy that happens for you. All right, so just water on my brush because I have a thing of water here. I just kind of knocked it off to make sure it was nice and clean. And these silky gel crayons. They're not that pigmented when it comes to, I guess, whenever you do the washes, but which is really lovely because you can get some really subtle shifts in colors, but that's super fun. All right, Let's see, uh, let me leave that water over there. What else do I have on my table here? 
Gel crayons. Gel crayons are by the Creative Inspirations. Um, so they are, let me actually pop this open. Get all these different colors, which is really fun. And um, here, I'll grab a darker one so you guys can see. They are, ooh, this one's hard to open. Uh, essentially, a gel crayon that, like, as you twist this, the uh, the end there extends so you can continue to use them even once you get past the point of, like, the, when you receive them. I haven't used this one. It is brand new. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're really quite fun. But they're, it's like a consistency of a lipstick, which is really cool. Uh, this is really great for all kinds of mixed media. But I didn't know how they would perform on this paper. <laughs> Angela, I'm glad you like them. They're fun. Really, really fun. Now, I will say, we did find out, though, that uh, our... The super black pens did not go on top of those very well. So, it's... It's one of those weird kind of a consistency because of that jelly kind of a, a feel to it. Pens and markers, I feel like, don't go on top of that very well. How do they blend? They actually do blend really well. Here, I might as well. Well, I have them. Pop them back open. Uh, so we got blue. Let's actually grab this nice dark red. So that, that teal, the teal is not that uh, dark. So you can see, you know, it's really not a dark uh, color in general. So that's why it's probably not looking super crazy pigmented. But again, this paper is also crazy slick. So they're kind of just glazing on top of one another, which is really fun. I like that. But because they are water soluble, and I think I actually grabbed a little too much water on there last time. So let me get a smaller brush and a rag. And I'm going to kind of get a little bit of that water off of that brush. So it's wet, but not crazy, crazy wet. It's not dripping. There we go. So you can kind of move it around and blend it that way, which is really fun. And again, remember, this is not a normal paper. It is not absorbent. So this paper is a polypropylene blend. So essentially it's a plastic paper, uh, which is why it's brand new. I don't know what all we can do with it, <laughs> which is why I'm testing. Um, but it's not absorbing into the paper. Like this isn't absorbing into the paper, but this is solvent. This is water. I can see it's starting to dry on this wash that I did, but over here, that water just sits on top. So it's not absorbing at all, which is why the, the gel crayons kind of just glaze on top of each other, which is really fun. Best way to seal Mungyo water soluble oil pastels. Uh, whenever it comes to pastels in general, I always end up using a spray varnish um, just because I'm not trying to brush on anything. That movement of the bristles on the surface, sorry, the bristles on the surface of your paper can definitely move things around. Um, but if you use a spray varnish, it doesn't matter if it's water soluble, if it's normal traditional oil pastels, or even the, um, the dry pastels. Spray varnish, do it outside or wherever you have really good ventilation, and that should give you a nice coating. If you're worried about it really reacting with your, the pastels that you're using, do an extremely light coat. Very, very light. You can always add layers on you can never undo if it reacts to your pastels. But really, really extremely light kind of versions of that would. Um, sorry, I'm also just seeing Katie. Uh, we had to grab some of these uh, recently because we couldn't find them. And we just found like three boxes. A whole stash of them. She found them all. <laughs> She's grumpy over there. <laughs> The look on her face just distracted me so bad. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's, it's great. I'm trying but. to find you acrylic pen, paint pens to try out. <clears throat> acrylic paint pens. I have some in my office. I think I could do. Um, let's see. Acrylic paint pens there with me today. I probably, we probably can grab a couple. Um, 
If not in your I'll office, it's in mine. Do you have like a bullet nib one? I might. Uh, if you go into my office okay. on the shelf, you know how I have the HG Art Concepts drawers? Uh -huh. I think it's the one on the left and they're all labeled, so paint pens should be in there. By the way, if you're looking for storage, the HG Concepts, those are amazing. I love them so much. I'm just, I want a wall of them. Like, I cannot get enough of them. <laughs> Can you find the, this paper at, yeah. a, at a different store? Derek, me and you are gonna have words. <laughs> no, you can only find it at a Jerry's Autorama. You have to buy it online. Which, I mean, I understand sometimes it's not, not easy. <laughs> but, Erica! Oh, I'm sorry, you have an exclamation point. Erica! <laughs> Hi, Erica. All right, so I did traditional oil paint. Oh, I do have, I'm sorry, the Edding uh, Permanent Acrylic Paint Marker here. So this is an acrylic marker, but it's white, and that would be white, white on white. You're not gonna see it. Um, now, I do have, this right here is the Accurate Technical Pens, which I wanted to just show on camera and this, I have a piece of tape on the back of this which needs to just come off and it's stuck to my finger okay all right because this if I remember correctly I did this on on a uh, Yupo paper Yupo paper words uh, so this is the waterproof technical pen and actually uh, I'm gonna do it down here in this corner because I am going to spray isopropyl isopropyl alcohol on here after it dries. So the really cool thing about these pens is that uh, when I tested it on Yupo, no matter how much uh, of the alcohol ink that I had put on there or how much of the isopropyl alcohol that I had on there, um, yes. Just took the drawer. We took the drawer. Okay, so I have plenty of paint markers now. Let's grab the smaller one. Yeah, you know what? I'll even grab a chon chonker one. We love the hot pink. Yes, the hot pink is fun. I also have uh, more neon colors. It's been a very neon color week. Yeah. And if you are not aware of what I painted for Tuesday's show, it was a Neon party zebra. Disco zebra. Yeah. All right, so I have 91% isopropyl alcohol, and this marker, or this pen, is uh, nice and dry. So, it's not moving at all with just the alcohol in there, but I'm gonna take an easy wiper rag and scrub it. Ooh, yep, it came off. All right, good to know. Pleasantly impressed with that. I might not have left it to dry for very long, to be honest. I might do that test again. Here, let me actually grab another pen. Do that, and I'm gonna test that probably tomorrow, just to make sure. See how well it does. All right, so what else do I have on my table here? I have the acrylic. paint markers, which are really fun. I guess you do have to shake, 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 shake. Actually, grab several of them and shake those. <laughs> Derek, you and those background paintings. I'm glad you like them. I'm glad they came in handy. Oh, the gel crayons are on sale. That's great, I did not know that. It's hard to keep up on all the sales that we have going on, but very, very reasonable. Lisa from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. If you uh, ever feel the need to send me some burners. Favorite ginger ale ever. 
you guys don't, so what you're about you don't know about Verner's? No. Okay. It's, it's, a Mich- it's a Michigan right thing. Um, well, there's, there's yeah. where we are. My best friend, I mean, I, I grew up in Florida, which is weird that I know about it, but my best friend uh, that I've known since second grade, uh, her family's from Michigan, and they moved down, and they brought the beauty of Verner's with them, and it's the best, the best ginger ale. Period. Period. The end. All right. So we got some acrylic markers. And hot pink is fun. And, and you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit to this fun green. Cool thing with these markers is that if you get to them fast enough, see that pink started already to set, but you can blend them. It's really fun when you do uh, different washes on top of something else. Verner's. If you know about Verner's, you know about Verner's. <laughs> and if you don't know about Verner's, go get you some because they are amazing. Uh, actually, I have found Verner's in the grocery store here once. <laughs> that was it. All right, so I've tested those. Let's actually do. Um, actually, I'm going to wait for a new piece of paper on that. I wanted to see how uh, pencils would do, colored pencils on here. So I have water, water soluble, this is a watercolor pencil. I have a traditional standard wax based regular pencil. And then I also have a oil based pencil. So, uh, and I also have a, um, one of our new colorless blenders, which are really awesome, but I wanted to see how well this did. I, I don't know if this is gonna do well. Shrugs in North Carolinian. Burners. Burners is the best ginger ale on the planet. I mean, but we have cheer wine, so I'll keep it. Yeah, so I've had cheer wine. I'm about to make some people looking at me. <laughs> Very angry. I'm not crazy about cheer wine. It's good, but I'm not a huge soda drinker. But ginger ale, I will drink like if my stomach's upset. And Verner's is made with like real ginger, so it's got that spiciness to it. Actually, if you sip it and breathe in at the same time, you're gonna end up coughing. It's strong. So, ooh, okay. Next time we have a real fair post COVID, I'll take you, and they have a whole booth at the fair of like little. Cheer wine like testers, and that's the way we walk in. You just get one, and then you go to the corn the cornbread place and get one of those. Can't believe you don't love cheer wine. I don't love it. I don't hate it though. So there is that. But I'm not huge into soda. I used to be as a kid, but how does a North Carolinian shrug? with sass, let me tell ya. Oh, actually, while I'm using these, they actually come with a brush. The Cezanne watercolored pencil set comes with its own brush, and it is a fantastic brush for using with these. But it, just like any other brush, you do need to knock off that um, starch that's on there before you use it. And water soluble. Okay. That blue feels like it feels like it's stained it a little bit, but it might just be because I'm not using a whole lot of water. That's interesting though. Okay. I'm not gonna try and put that back on. Oh, other thing, the little plastic pieces that come with your brush, don't try to put those back on. Throw it away. 
That is just there so that it survives shipping. If you try to put it back on, that you have a run the risk of uh, splaying the bristles really badly and destroying your brush. <laughs> oh, Kelly. Ooh, I'm fighting words, but not with me. <laughs> Cheer wine, okay. Cheer wine. Would you like to explain what cheer wine is, Amanda? It's a cherry flavored soda. Yeah. But it almost tastes a little bit like Dr. Pepper too. It's like a super cherry Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And it's just Dr. Pepper meets extra cherries. Like if you were to make like a Shirley Temple, kinda yeah. with just with Coke. With Coke. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. It's our native sun soda, so you kind of like. You either love it or hate it, but you have to put up with it. <laughs> you love it or you hate it, or, but you do have to deal with it no matter what. All right, let's do... Ooh, we got some teal. Actually, I will say I do really love the way that the colored pencils are going on here. Not gonna lie. Colorless blender, though. This is what I was curious about. Is it kind of scratching the colored pencil that's already down on the surface? Like it feels like it kind of is a little. So when it comes to colored pencils on this paper, I would probably more suggest just going from one colored pencil to the other and like varying your pressure to get that gradient rather than using a colorless blender. Cause I don't, once you start trying to like scrub them together, you know, it's, it's such a slick surface. Like it just, I feel like it pulls up that colored pencil. These are the Saison watercolor pencils, right? Uh, that was the Saison watercolor pencils. Oh. These are the Saison regular, regular waxed base pencils. because you still have the watercolor like thing right in front I of do. you. I <laughs> do. All right. There we go. Okay, colored pencils. Good to know. Now, because this is the uh, wax-based colored pencils, which is a pretty standard across the board when it comes to colored pencils, but I wanted to see if the oil-based ones or any different. So the polychromos. Got a little bit of that on there. Uh, it has a different feel on the surface of the paper. I actually like the wax base better. Like this feels, okay, I didn't stick my hand in paint. This feels almost like it's sliding across the surface, which is, it's not bad, but I think I prefer the regular pencils to it. Because that, that felt like I had way more control over what was happening. This one feels, it just feels kind of weird. <laughs> it's not bad. So if you do have uh, wax-based pencils at home, you can always give it a try. Because again, also it varies from brand to brand. One brand of wax pencils might feel very different from the other. But from Saison to Faber-Castell, prefer the Saison. That out of the way. Uh, then I actually don't think I tried dry pastels on here, did I? With just the pastels straight to the paper. I've tried the dry pastels, the soft pastels um, that are clay based, not the oil pastels. Um, I don't think I've tried these without having a 
acrylic paints or something underneath them. So I wanted to try them straight on to the paper. <laughs> um, let's use a fun little red color. Ooh, that's fun. And I do have something, there's um, something underneath the tablecloth here on, that's stuck to the table, so that's why you're seeing a little bit of texture. <laughs> but if that wasn't there, that would not do that. But this is quite lovely. I like that. Get a nice blend. That's fun. Now I have pastels all over my hands. Messy. <laughs> all right, let me actually tap off this pastel dust because that's the one thing with pastel dust, in case you guys didn't know. You do not want to blow on it. Like it's, it is pigment with a little bit of, uh, usually the binder in the dryer pastels is uh, like a kaolin clay, but it's still pigment. So when you get this dust and you blow it, you have now dispersed it into the air as a something that you can breathe in, which is not a good plan. <laughs> so number one rule when working with dry pastels is don't <sighs> at, <laughs> at your artwork. But that's really nice. I do like that. You can even blend it a little bit with your finger. It's quite lovely. Now I have pastel dust on my hand. Okay, let's see what else we got on here. We do have some pan pastels. I kinda wanted to see how that would apply. Plus there's this really pretty kind of fun color on top that I wanted to try. It reminds me of makeup every time. So, got an applicator and let's see what else, what other colors are in here. Cause this is a, um, a multiple set. So there's bronze I think is on top. Then the one that I just showed you is called Rich Gold. And then this one on the bottom is Light Gold. Which ones do you guys want to see? Any takers? Any ta They're both very, very, uh, focused on reading. So I'm just going to use the top one. The no. Viewers. I like the darker ones. This one on top? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys, the viewers... <laughs> favorite mediums yeah the the mungyo uh soft pastels are really fantastic really really are all right so pan pastels Ooh. that's so pretty you know what? i can even Go through there. Although I'm gonna now have to wipe this off. Look at that. That's pretty. Sometimes you just need a little uh, glitz in your life and now I have it all over my hands. <laughs> That's all right. I'm not mad about it. I'm just shiny today. This is why I also have an apron on. <laughs> MJP, you made it. So, so far I'm just uh, testing out the Artfinity Synthesis paper. I'm still, I'm so surprised I can say it without any kind of a hiccup. Uh, I've tested oil paints, a traditional oil paint. This is the Charbon Extra Fine. Um, 
the blue shadow color mixed with a little titanium white. I have some solvent here to see what it does. And then I have a chunk of oil paint over here to see how that does. Uh, this was the gel crayons, the silky gel crayons. This is acrylic markers. That is water soluble. Why is the word escaping me? Colored pencils, colored pencils, water soluble colored pencils. These two are the traditional colored pencils. This is an, or, I'm sorry, the traditional wax based colored pencils. And this is an oil based colored pencil. This is the waterproof technical pen and I smeared it around with some isopropyl alcohol and this mess over here is pastel. So I'm gonna put this down somewhere. Hopefully that I won't touch it. And then I'm gonna grab another sheet. Yes, the paper from the other day. There's a lot of questions and we, we haven't tested a lot of this, so gotta test it. Ah, I'm glad you like the colors. All right, let's make more of a mess. So I have Turner Design Gouache. Now this, in case you guys were wondering, is a traditional wash, which means it will re-wet um, once it dries, it reactivates just like watercolor. Oops, dropping stuff. And if you guys do have any questions about the differences and all the different washes, washes, wash, gouache, wash, gouache, gouache, <laughs> what's the plural of gouache? Is the plural of gouache, is it like moose? Is it gouache is gouache? I don't usually think to myself, look at all those gouache. Yeah, gouaches? Colors? Gouaches, this is. All right, but if you do want to know the difference between all the different things labeled gouache, how about that? Uh, I do have a gouache show that you can always check out. Let me get some of this out of the way. All right, so I have my palette. How many layers of soft pastels will it hold? That's a good question. So um, I guess MJ Pete, what's a good layer of pastel? I guess, how many do I need to shoot for? Cause this right here is two different colors. Sorry, I'm trying to also, there we go. So this is two different colors. And then I did the pan pastel on top, kind of scooching that in. So let's see. Yes, I'm definitely going to try the pastel layers. I mean, it's, it's a odd surface. So, I mean, I feel like it would hold a lot of different layers, but it's also so slick that it's, I'm curious if it would start taking off the underlying layers, you know? So I'm gonna blend this out a little bit with my finger. There's blue. And let's tweak it a little bit with this. Yep. Got a little extra chunks there. All right. 10 minimum, 30 maximum. Woo! MJP. All right, layers. I'm gonna need, actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch to another piece of paper. Cause I'm gonna need more surface area. If we're gonna try for 10, how about that? Oh, I got another piece here. Let's do that. All right, so I guess what constitutes a layer of pastel? Does that need to be light? Does it need to be a solid coverage? You tell me. We'll start with, Trying to also like scratch my nose without pastel dust going on my face. I can hear that it isn't very, it is not very toothy. Um, that's where I'm, I'm not sure. So let's start off with the first one. Like, does that constitute a layer? Cause let me turn it this way. 
Um, or should I blend it? I guess that's the question. It's a very smooth surface. I think the texture you're seeing is actually the, uh, the table cloth underneath it. There's one. Is that, does this count? Do I need to blend it? Is my other question. Let me also tap off the excess. All right. So we'll call that first layer. Because MJP says sure. <laughs> um, let's go to a little bit of a trying to think of like the layering so like you guys can see the different layers so I'm gonna do yeah, that's, I'm gonna two. that's two okay so it fills the surface here's three Tap it off. All right, I didn't really tap off very well. It's kind of sticking, but well, that's okay. So it is a uh, kind of more sticking to my finger than anything, which is okay. It's just, I, again, this is the name of the game. It's a slick surface. You kind of have to just be aware. So I probably would not blend with a hand. Not gonna lie. Just because I think the oils I don't in your hands. you thought that was a good idea. No, no, that definitely wasn't a good idea. But again, this is, this is what I'm here for. Here to do this for you guys. Make bad decisions. All right, um, I would probably. Infinity outtakes. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would probably want to blend with a brush. Uh, can I get a pastel blending brush? I don't know what drawer it's in, so I might be rummaging over there for a minute. Don't either. <laughs> All right, so there's, I'm gonna say that's three. Four. Very difficult working flat. Vertically is easier. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, whenever you are working with uh, pastels, if you do have it at a tilted angle where the pastel dust will fall down instead of kind of collect on the surface like it is right now, that's one of those things series of hills, like drawing hills. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try this color. Where are we at? Is that four? Is this, is this five or six? <laughs> Let's count. Where was I at? Aha. All right, so instead of blending with my gross hands, let me try some brushes. I've started a tally system so that we will collectively know what layer you're on. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Actually, I'm only going to blend this half. How about that? Because I feel like this is removing a lot more of the pastel still, even using a brush. 
They're sponges. Well, and that's it, it's it's a slick surface. Yeah. yeah, as it this might do really really well for very subtle changes and shifts and if you want to have such a really yay you guys keeping up on my account that was five <laughs> but um but yeah it might be really really nice to get that really soft and subtle kind of blend but I will say it's almost like static cling as well that pastel dust does not tap off at all Yeah, like it's clinging to the uh, the surface there. All right, now let's shift over to some orangey color. Sorry, this is gonna probably make a bit of mud, but it's okay. It feels like it's also not really sticking to the surface at this point. Oh. That is really sticking to that pastel, huh? Yeah. All right, so let me try the fan brush. <laughs> Shove this up a little bit more so you guys can see. I think I was blending this side. It looks like I was blending this side. I feel like I'm also just really moving. The like excess off. Get a little tappy tap. You know what? I'm actually going to brush that excess off into the trash can. So that was six, right? Uh -huh. Six. Let's try for a brighter kind of a. Mmm. You know what? It was orange. Let's go for this color. Woo! Hello. How you doing? That is. That's a color. There's seven. Again, it feels like I'm just removing the excess whenever I'm floating this around, so it doesn't feel like a normal paper. It really doesn't. That extra up there. All right. Stuck again. So let's do purple. That was seven, right? Yeah. All right. Here is, woo, eight. I feel like I just scratched it with the corner of this. So I am putting a little muscle into this. So why not? I want to see what it can do. This is turning out to be like the prettiest muddy color ever. Not gonna lie. It's <laughs> funny. It's funny that it's like static clinging the, the excess dust to the surface. It feels like it. That's what's happening. All right. 
What number was that? That, that was, was it. Eight. eight. All right, we're gonna go a little bit brighter. Um, went that way. Let's go this way. Oop! And I just broke the pastel in, ha in half, but that's okay. We're gonna pretend like it didn't happen. Nine. I don't know how much of this is like, it's it's subtly changing the color, but again, not like a normal paper would. It's fun. I am making a huge mess over here. There's just pastel dust everywhere. <laughs> Tweety! It does look like like tweed, doesn't it? Make a jacket out of this. <laughs> Alright, so let's do let's do some of this like fun peachy color. It does not feel like it's really going on there. It feels like this pastel is a little harder too which might just be the pigment that's in there. So I'm not even gonna try and blend that out. I'm gonna just go to a different color. It's crazy that it doesn't look like it from above, but like I can see that it has It tints it slightly, yeah. but it, like you know how that, from this angle, that though, funky purple left a lot of excess? Yeah. It did not do that with this, but it also felt like when I, you know when you're drawing with a certain pastel and the pastel just feels harder? It's yeah. the same way. And that, that happens due to the pigment. So some pigments are a little bit softer, some of them are a little harder, but yeah, see, this one is there. So. Again, as I'm like brushing it off, it feels like it's just taking it right back off. But I think that's technically 11. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much further it's really gonna go. So, do you guys wanna keep me, uh, have me keep going? You tell me. I have pastel dust everywhere. Woo, buddy. kind of more contained while you guys are answering if you want to see more layers. I feel like it also just absorbed into that easy wiper. <laughs> That's enough. All right, well there you go, pastels on there. And also, do I have a, yes, Soho wiper, or Soho wipe. This is pastel dust, gets it off pretty quick. This is also why I can't have pretty nails, because <laughs> it just gets everywhere. All right, so that was our pastel tester. That was fun. Let me see. What else do we have? We have the design gouache, and I also have the concentrated watercolor because I honestly wanted to play with that. I know watercolors do well on there, but my curiosity is wondering if I give a really large concentrated watercolor kind of thing on the surface of this, tech, uh, this paper, I'm wondering if it will crack off later gonna find out oh, same same thing with the design guasha this this is a lot of the testers that I'm doing today it's not going to be like the pastels was it was pretty evident evident 
immediately what it's going to do with the oil paint with the gouache with the watercolor and the um the other ones it's going to take me a minute just to get the results just because i have to see over time what it's going to do because i just don't know i have pastel dust on there <laughs> You're welcome, MJ Pete. It's like I said, it's a very unnatural surface. It's it's very slick. So, you know, pastels, you're just expecting that toothy surface so your pastels can really grab onto it. But this it goes on, but it's a uh, it's a strange surface to be, you know, painting on or pasteling on. Near bubble. Does it wipe off? Does it wipe off with what media, Derek? <laughs> um, I only have, I'm sorry, I have a hair. It's like attached to my side. Did that ever happen to you? I wonder if he's talking about the, um, driving me nuts. Pan pastels. If they will just wipe off. Or not the pan pastels, the pastels in general. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was coming off on my hand. I don't know after that many layers if it would just wipe off with my hand. That'd be a question, which I will try after I do the design gouache. Oh, this is such a pretty color. Mm-hmm. That is that brilliant violet with the uh, permanent green medium. So the because the purple has blue in it and the green kind of has that it leans more towards blue. It gives you a real fun kind of a blue purple color in the middle. And because it is a traditional gouache, when it dries, this will reactivate. Because it's definitely already drying on here. So. But I am curious if over time, if that will crack and come off. So I'm going to try and do that. That is something that I will end up testing and figuring out after this ends, unfortunately. The wipe I was using to clean my fingers, that was, what did I put that, ah, there it is. The Soho Studio Wipes. Uh, these are really awesome. They are, you can use them to clean your brushes, your hands, or any spills. They're non-toxic, they're biodegradable. Um, it's any media. This is really, really great. Uh, not gonna lie. I've also uh, gotten paint all over my table. This saved it. And I'm talking about a wood table with wood grain. This got it out of the wood grain. Um, and my shirts, my uh, pants. This, these are awesome. Which is why I always have them nearby. <laughs> so. We, wow, we are actually really, really close to time. I did not think that it was going to. Time flies, man. Yeah, time flies when you're experimenting. Real quick before I guess we uh, we go, I'm just gonna lay down some of this. I'm using the uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, concentrated watercolor. This is the turquoise blue because of course it is. And I'm gonna do that. I love these so much. They are so pretty. They're not clicking either when they say it's concentrated. It will turn your water the same color. So fast. So fast. You really, uh, when you're painting with these, you don't need even that much. But again, I am curious the 
really thick areas where I drew it with a line. I'm gonna leave that as is because I don't think this is gonna be a problem down here where I did the wash. That should dry just like a normal watercolor and it should be fine. But and I definitely touched it. You can see where it's beating up a little bit, which that happens just because the oil's on my hands. Um, so that is gonna be fine. This, I'm curious once it dries, what it's gonna do to the surface of the paper. I'm not sure. Katie, that face. were wondering well what will wipe the pastel off the pastel paper uh probably isopropyl alcohol he's asking if that wipe oh if it will mm -hmm. let's find out while we're here call this our last last test i'm gonna actually leave this up here there is a blob of water that i spilled now i can push it all right so I know, probably will. But again, this is, I ground that into the surface of this paper so much. Let me actually push this up so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I'll wipe it off to an extent, but like I really kind of scrubbed that in, but I'm curious if isopropyl alcohol will remove it any differently. Let's find out. Hopefully I can get a clean side of my Easy Wiper rag. Yeah, and you can see where I actually scratched it um, right there. But yeah, this isopropyl alcohol is coming right off. That's pretty fun. So even scrubbing it, I mean, it'll, isopropyl alcohol will remove a lot of stuff off the surface of this really, really well. But uh, I think this is, cause it's non-toxic. I don't know what this is, the base of this is, but, um, Will I give you a full report? Yes, actually, you know what? I will I will type up a review of this and maybe some photos and I will post it to our Jerry's Live Facebook group. So uh, because I'm the host of Jerry's Live, I have my page, Emmy Host of Jerry's Live, that you guys can actually talk to me directly if you want to have a conversation about these. Uh, Cause feel free if you have questions of, hey, will this work? I, I'm happy to test them out. But um, I will make a, I'll type up a report and uh, make a post on our Jerry's uh, live Facebook group and then I'll send you guys some pictures that way. So if you're not part of that group, feel free to join. It's free to anybody and you just have to make sure that you do answer that one security question because if you don't answer the security question, we're going to not allow you in because you will be deemed a robot. But I will send you a message saying, hey, you can't get in because you didn't answer. So <laughs> you can always try again later. Uh, but that was open studio, guys. I actually am going to also attempt to glue some stuff on here for collage, as well as I'm going to try and do an image transfer because we were talking about that earlier. And I have a laser printout of just a photo, random, random lady at, at a pool because this yeah. is where I'd like to be. Although it's finally a little bit warm today, so at least that that's nice. Very beautiful outside. I hope it's beautiful where you are, though. Um, but that was uh, that was open studio with all the crazy testing. So uh, we have these every first and third Thursdays of the month. I'm usually on the first one. Jamie is usually on the third one, unless something happens with scheduling and we have to switch it around. But um, if you guys like this, please. 
hit that thumbs up button and I will see you next time.